Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a budget. Today's episode is going to be a $25 deck tech. Decks on this channel are built to be fun, inexpensive, and focused. If you want to learn more about what a focused Commander deck is, check out this video here. On this deck tech, I'm going to take you through its strategy, the tactics, and how this deck wins. This show and episodes like this one are possible because of viewers like you. So if you're looking for some easy ways to help support the show, make sure you like this episode and share it with friends. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Thank you to everyone who's already purchased our merchandise, it really does help support the channel. Another easy way to support this channel is by using our TCG Player affiliate links. So make sure that you're looking for those links in the description whenever you're buying a deck or just individual cards. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support. Today's deck tech is on Yawgmoth Rand Physician. With its current price, this is going to have to be a commander excluded deck tech. Yawgmoth is a 2-4 human cleric with protection from humans that costs 2 black black. It has pay one life, sacrifice another creature, put a minus one minus one counter on up to one target creature and draw a card. And black black, discard a card, proliferate. Yawgmoth is an incredibly powerful engine. He's a free sacrifice outlet that draws us cards and can help control the board. If we get set up and give Yawgmoth the resources that he needs, he'll basically do the rest for us. With Yawgmoth's abilities, he fits perfectly into an aristocrat style strategy. So what's our strategy for this deck? Well, we're going to create some fodder to fuel our value engine commander. We want to fill the board with tokens as well as creatures that we can bring back. By doing this, Yawgmoth can easily refill our hand to keep us going. And then how do we win with this deck where we're either going to drain our opponents out over time or we're going to combo off? Yawgmoth's abilities really lead to some really interesting ways to combo. Some of these can come out of absolutely nowhere and they're very hard to stop. As with all Commander's Quarters decks, I'm going to take you through 10 different tactics that show you how the deck works and how we're going to win with it. So let's start off with tactic number one, the dock is in. First up, let's run some mana rocks like Fractured Power Stone, Prismatic Lens, and Guardian Idol. Each of these only costs two and taps for a colorless. Guardian Idol does enter the battlefield tapped, but we can actually turn into a creature if we need to. Next up, we've got some utility mana rocks with Mind Stone and Unstable Obelisk. We can pay one to tap and sacrifice Mind Stone to draw a card. And we can pay seven to tap and sacrifice Unstable Obelisk to destroy target permanent. Mono black decks can really struggle against certain types of permanents, so this can come in huge. Next up, let's run some mana dorks like Mannequin, Hedron Crawler, and Milliken. Mana dorks are great for this deck because they can ramp us and they can also be sacrifice fodder too. So we're also going to be running Ledimir, which taps for a black. Since we're in a monocolor deck, we're not really worried about fixing our mana. But this can be helpful when we activate Yawgmoth's other ability. Next up, we've got Bantu's Monument, which helps reduce the cost of our black creature spells we cast by one. On top of that, whenever we cast any creature spell, each opponent loses one life and we gain one life. With Yawgmoth's ability losing us life, this can help mitigate some of it. And finally, we're running Pitiless Plunderer, which can come in huge in this deck. When it's in play, whenever another one of our creatures dies, it creates a treasure token. It even counts token creatures as well. With this in play, we can have some really explosive turns. What are some of those creatures, though, that we really want to sacrifice? Let's go through them now in tactic number two, Never Say Die. First up, we have Tenacious Dead, which when it dies, we can pay one in a black to return it right back to the battlefield tapped under our control. This is a fantastic, repeatable source of sacrifice fodder if we have mana open for it. Essentially, for each two mana that we pay, we lose one life, draw a card, and put a minus one, minus one counter on something. We even have some more resilient pieces with Bloodsong Champion and Reassembling Skeleton. Unlike Tenacious Dead, we actually don't need mana open for them when they die. If we attacked with a creature this turn, we can pay one in a black to bring Bloodsoak Champion back. And Reassembling Skeleton is even better because it has no such requirement. These are fantastic creatures that we can continue to sacrifice for value. And then there's Haunted Dead, which is a decent sacrifice target as well. When it comes into play, we get a 1-1 Spirit Creature token. And if it's in our graveyard, we can pay one in a black and discard two cards to bring it right back. Now, discarding those cards kind of negates the card advantage that our commander provides us, but if we're set up properly, this can still be effective. But then we have some creatures that have Undying, which can be especially effective with our commander. Butcher Ghoul, Ever Nightshade, and Sightless Ghoul all have Undying, so whenever they die, if they had no plus one plus one counters on them, they come right back. The thing is, our commander can actually cancel that counter out. Let's say that we have Butcher Ghoul and Ever Nightshade in play. We sacrifice the Butcher Ghoul and put a minus one minus one counter on one of our opponent's creatures. Butcher Ghoul comes right back with a plus one plus one counter on it. We then sacrifice the Ever Night Shade and put a minus one minus one counter on the Butcher Ghoul to cancel out that plus one plus one counter. Ever Night Shade comes right back with a plus one plus one counter on it. We can then sacrifice the Butcher Ghoul to cancel out that counter on the Ever Night Shade. We can repeat this as many times as we want to draw a ton of cards. Essentially, we're going to be paying one life for each card that we draw. With this deck, though, we've got plenty of ways to gain life and win with a combo like this, but we'll go through that later. But for now, let's go through some more creatures that we can sacrifice in tactic number 3, Left Behind. First up, we've got some creatures that replace themselves when they die with Mirror Sire, Carrier Thrall, and Doom to Center. Being able to get two bodies out of cheap creatures like these is a fantastic value. But perhaps an even better value for this deck is Weapon Craft Enthusiast, which gives us three bodies. And three bodies for three mana is a very good rate. But let's take it a step further with Sangir Autocrat, which is four for four. Now we have to make sure that we sacrifice those Surf tokens first before Sangir Autocrat leaves the battlefield. Since our commander is a free sacrifice outlet though, that's no big deal. 
And finally, we've got Rite of Bells and Lock, which is going to give us a total of five creatures over three turns for only four mana. This is a fantastic value, and if we actually just want to keep that 6-6 six, six around, we probably can. We're not quite done with tokens yet, though. So let's go through some even bigger ways to make them in tactic number four, Further Fodder. First up, there's Endrixar, Master Breeder. It says, whenever you cast a creature spell, create X-1-1 one, one Black Thrall creature tokens where X is that spell's converted mana cost. When you control seven or more Thralls, sacrifice Endrixar. This can be a huge token producer for us. With our commander on the field, most of the time we can keep that Thrall number below seven. So we just get some nice additional value whenever we cast a creature. Next up, we've got Abhorrent Overlord, which is going to create a ton of Harpy tokens. When it comes into play, we create a number of tokens equal to our devotion to black. With a mono black deck, that's going to be quite high. Next up, we've got Orochi Hatchery, which has a lot of synergy with our commander. Even just by casting it for two mana, it comes into play with one charge counter on it. Whenever we use our commander's proliferate ability, we can add another charge counter to it. And then whenever we want, we can pay five and tap it to create a token for each charge counter on it. This is a fantastic source of repeatable sacrifice fodder that we can use throughout the game. And the longer that the game goes, the more fodder that we get. Finally, there's Awaken the Earth Smile, which can be a high-risk, high-reward play for us. It says each player discards all the cards in their hand, then creates that many 2-2 black zombie creature tokens. With this deck, we can easily get a ton of cards into our hand. That means that we're going to be creating the most zombie tokens out of anyone, and we're also shutting down any plans our opponents have with their hand. We can sacrifice some zombies or some other creatures to spread out some minus one minus one counters on our opponent's creatures. While we're doing this, we're going to be drawing cards to refill our hand. Once their zombies have one counter on them, we just have to proliferate once. If we're set up correctly at the end of this, we're going to end up way ahead of our opponents. Now you might think that we're done with tokens, but we're not quite there just yet. So let's go through some real token value in tactic number five, Fodder Factory. First up, there's Genesis Chamber, which says, whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, if Genesis Chamber is untapped, that creature's controller creates a 1-1 colorless mirror artifact creature token. Now, this does benefit our opponents, but it's definitely going to benefit us more. On top of that, this and some other cards that we'll get into really combo with our undying creatures. When they die and come back into play, we get a mirror token. We can then sacrifice that mirror to give them a minus one minus one counter to cancel out their plus one plus one counter. This is a very powerful effect that our opponents might not see coming. And then we've got Zathra Necromancer, which makes a zombie every single time one of our humans dies. We're running a decent amount of humans in this deck, so this can really come in handy. Next up, we've got Pawn of Ulamog and Sifter of Skulls, which are both fantastic in this deck. Anytime one of our non-token creatures dies, we create a spawn token. This works fantastically with a lot of our creatures, but especially our undying ones. And then Open the Graves is similar. It gives us a zombie token anytime a non-token creature we control dies. Because it's an enchantment, it's also harder for our opponents to deal with. Next up, there's Lightning Coils, which can also benefit from our commander's proliferate ability. It says, whenever a non-token creature you control dies, put a charge counter on Lightning Coils. At the beginning of your upkeep, if Lightning Coils has five or more charge counters on it, remove them all and then create that many 3-1 red elemental creature tokens with haste. Exile them at the beginning of the next end step. So this can build over time and create a ton of tokens for us. And we can easily sacrifice them before we have to exile them too to get more value out of them. Now these effects are all great, but they're not quite as good as our Golden Pig. The Golden Pig is going to be the number one card out of our 99. And the Golden Pig for this deck is Nest of Scarabs. It's an enchantment that costs two and a black. It says whenever you put one or more minus one minus one counters on a creature, create that many one one black insect creature tokens. This card is absolutely absurd with our commander. Essentially, it allows our commander to draw us a ton of cards and take out every single one of our opponent's creatures. We just need to sacrifice one creature to get this started. Once we do, we put a minus one minus one counter on one of our opponent's creatures. That's going to create us an insect, which we can sacrifice to repeat that over and over again. Now, our life total is a limitation, but with the cards we're drawing, we can easily draw into one of our life gain cards. If our opponents don't deal with this, they're going to be in big trouble. This card works in perfect synergy with our commander, and that's what makes it the golden pig. Now, we've talked a lot about those life gain cards that we need to stay alive. Let's go through a few of them now in tactic number six, Massive Gains. First up, there's Death Greeter, which says, whenever another creature dies, you may gain one life. So essentially, this mitigates our commander's downside and then some. When we sacrifice one of our creatures, we lose a life, but we also gain a life. And whenever one of our opponent's creatures dies, we just gain a life. This card is fantastic at helping us stay alive when we're comboing off. Next up, there's Dross Harvester, which says, at the end of your turn, you lose four life. It more than makes up for that, though, because it also says, whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from play, you gain two life. With all the creatures that are going to be dying on the battlefield, this can gain us a ton of life throughout the game. And finally, a mono black deck probably wouldn't be complete without Grey Merchant of Asphodel. When it comes into play, each opponent loses X life where X is our devotion to black, and then we gain life equal to the life lost this way. As I mentioned before, with a mono black deck, we're going to have a ton of devotion. Outside of gaining life, we've got plenty of other ways to benefit from our creatures dying. Let's go through some of those ways now in tactic number seven, dying for the cause. First up, there's Shadows of the Past, which says, whenever a creature dies, scry one. This can really ensure that we're only drawing gas off the top of our library. Next up, there's Gate to the Afterlife, which is a fantastic way to loot and to gain life. And then Grim Harvest Specs and Harvester of Souls can both draw us cards on top of what we draw with our commander. The thing about each of these cards is that they only count non-token creatures. Luckily, that's not the case with Smothering Abomination, which is an absolute bomb in this deck. It says whenever you sacrifice a creature, draw a card. So this also counts tokens, which is a fantastic effect. It does make us sacrifice a creature during our upkeep, but that's well worth it. Some other death benefits that we have come from Zulaport Cutthroat, Vindictive Vampire, and Falconrath Noble. Each of these are incredible ways to drain our opponents whenever our creatures die. 
If we combo off with one of these in play, we pretty much just win. And then we're running Psychosis Crawler, which drains our opponents whenever we draw a card. Now this actually doesn't gain us any life, but it can make our opponents lose a ton throughout the game. Another way to weaponize those cards that we're drawing is with Infect. Tainted Strike gives a creature plus one plus zero and Infect until end of turn. So when that creature hits someone, it's going to give them poison counters. We can then use Yawgmoth's ability to proliferate to take them out. It's good for us to have this alternative way to take out someone if we need to. And Tainted Strike is just a card that can come out of absolutely nowhere. If you want to see my take on how underrated this card is, check out my Quest Recorders episode on it. But now let's get into some of the ways that we can find those cards that we need to win. So it's time to move on to tactic number 8, let me check the back. Our first card is a fantastic tutor for this deck with Mausoleum Secrets. It says search your library for a black card with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. With this deck we're going to have plenty of creatures in our graveyard and most of our stuff doesn't cost that much anyway. So we just need a few creatures in our graveyard to get pretty much whatever piece that we need. So essentially at a certain point this becomes a demonic tutor at instant speed for this deck. And then there's Demir Housecard which is a fantastic tutor for anything that costs 4. And then Flesh Rather has Transfigure, which is a very unique ability. We can pay one black black and sacrifice it to search our library for any creature card with a converted mana cost of 4 and put it directly into play. And at 4 mana, we've got plenty of great combo pieces as well as finishers. We're also going to be running a standard tutor like Diabolic Tutor. It costs 4 and it lets us go get any card. And then there's Final Parting, which is especially good in this deck. It costs 1 more and it lets us get 2 cards, one goes into our hand and one goes into our graveyard. That card that we put into our graveyard can be something like Reassembling Skeleton. So essentially for 5 mana it tutors for 2 cards that we can use. Another way to go get that Reassembling Skeleton is with Corpse Connoisseur. And it even has Unearth so we can do it again if we need to. These tutors are fantastic at helping us throughout the game as well as finishing off our opponents. But what if our opponents try to throw a wrench into our plans? Let's go through some ways to stop them in tactic number 9, Unbreakable. First up, there's Demonic Vigor, which is an aura that says, when Enchanted Creature dies, return that card to its owner's hand. We can put this on our commander to protect him, or we can use it to get back some Sacrifice Fodder. No Rest from the Wicked does the exact same thing, but in a much bigger way. By sacrificing it, we get back to our hand every single one of our creatures that died this turn. Next up, there's Kai's Ghost Form, which can even save our commander from being exiled. It says, when Enchanted Permanent dies or is put into exile, return that card to the battlefield under your control. Some other cards that will bring our commander or other creatures right back are Undying Evil, Supernatural Stamina, and Abnormal Endurance. Each of these essentially bring the creature right back once they die. These are all very cheap effects, so we don't have to save up too much mana for some solid protection. But there are plenty of ways outside of our commander's ability to throw a wrench into our opponent's plans too. Let's go through them now in our final tactic, tactic number 10, Total Control. First up there's Siphon Flesh, which makes everyone else sacrifice a creature, and then we create a 2-2 black zombie creature token for each creature sacrificed this way. So basically this can take out 3 creatures and give us 3 tokens to sacrifice. A much bigger way to deal with our opponent's creatures though is Archfiend of Ifnir. It says whenever you cycle or discard another card, put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on each creature your opponent's control. This works huge in tandem with our commander's discard proliferate ability. After that first counter is put on all of our opponent's creatures, we can really get this going. Essentially after that, whenever we discard and proliferate, we get 2 more minus 1 minus 1 counters on each of our opponent's creatures. This is a very easy way for us to completely wipe our opponent's boards. But perhaps an even easier way is with Butcher of Malakir. It does cost 7, but once we get out, it's extremely effective. It says whenever Butcher, Malakir, or another creature you control dies, each opponent sacrifices a creature. Now, we've got a lot of expendable creatures, but our opponents probably don't, so it won't take too long for us to completely wipe our opponent's boards. Yawgmoth is a fantastic engine and a very powerful commander. But now that we've gone through the spells in this deck, let's go on to the mana base. First up there's Cryptic Caves, which we can tap for a colorless and we can pay 1 and tap and sacrifice it to draw a card if we have 5 or more lands. Next up there's Foundry the Consoles and Spawning Bed, both of which tap for a colorless so we can pay and tap and sacrifice them to create tokens. And the rest of our mana base is very simple, we're going to be running 33 swamps. And now that we've gone through every single card in this deck, let's do a quick price check. A quick reminder that our deck costs are calculated using TCG Player Optimization, optimizing with even heavily played and damaged cards because those cards need a home too. The average Yawgmoth EDH rec deck is going to set you back $579.43. Our deck is going to be much more affordable, coming in at $24.93. A quick reminder that neither of these deck costs include the Commander. Again, Commander's Quarters decks are about to be tuned and focused within their budget, but there are always ways that we can improve on them. So let's go through some reasonable upgrades now to see what some of those ways just might be. First up, let's upgrade this deck by adding an Everflowing Chalice and taking out Prismatic Lens. Everflowing Chalice is a fantastic mana rock that can really benefit from our Commander's proliferate ability. Next up, we're going to add in Blood Artist and take out Fractured Power Stone. This is another fantastic finisher in this deck that can really help us when we're comboing off. Next up, let's add in Drop's Messenger and take out Haunted Dead. It's another great undying creature that also makes someone else lose life when it comes into play. And then let's upgrade this deck with Ogre Slumlord and take out Lightning Coils. It's a fantastic token producer that makes us a rat anytime a non-token creature dies. Next up, let's upgrade this deck by adding in Dictative Erebos and taking out Butcher of Malakir. This is just a much better version of Butcher of Malakir that is harder for opponents to deal with. And finally, let's add in Necro Skitter and take out Abhorrent Overlord. With this deck, Necro Skitter can essentially gain us control of a ton of our opponent's creatures. And with that, our show is coming to a close, but I really want to hear about your thoughts on these picks, so why don't you let me know in the comments below. And make sure that you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Links to our social media accounts can be found in the description.
Also in the description below is a link to the Commander's Quarters Patreon page, and I just want to say a quick thank you to the patrons who have subscribed so far. There are many benefits to being a patron for the Commander's Quarters, including being able to vote on future Commanders for deck techs. There's even a general level tier where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. I truly couldn't do this without all of your support, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, check out some of our other episodes on budget deck techs, quest for quarters episodes, commander topics, and creators quarters. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again, and have a good one. <laughs>